How is it going guys? Drew Peacock here back with another video and today we're gonna talk about the elephant in the room. I get asked this question every single time I run into a subscriber at a car meet and it is Drew. What is it like driving a right hand drive car in California or just driving a right hand drive car in general? So I'm gonna explain the differences, the confusion, and just kind of little things that you don't consider when driving a right hand drive car or when converting to a right hand drive car. So first things first, you know, first impressions of driving a right hand drive car. When I first climbed this car and I realized, God, okay, well, you know, time to separate the, the, the children from men. It's not that much different. It honestly isn't. I said it in the past, you know, you switch off in the bedroom every once in a while, you change hands, you get used to it. It's not that bad. Driving right hand drive, it, it's not a challenge. The only thing to this day that still confuses me every once in a while is that goddamn mirror right there because that mirror normally is your best friend in a left hand drive car it's right next to you it's your buddy you spend all of your time with it you can talk to it if you want to but in a right hand drive car that mirror right there is confusing because you don't know what to trust you don't you're not used to turning your head that angle you don't know your blind spot it, it you don't know what to trust with that mirror now this mirror is your best friend and it's the easiest thing ever changing lanes to the right super easy changing lanes to the left you're reconsidering buying a right hand drive car. It's not that bad, but it is a little bit different. And to this day, I've been driving for about a month now, I think a month-ish around there. And to this day, that mirror is still a little bit confusing. This mirror is fine. And switching from right hand drive in my Supra to left hand drive in my Mustang isn't too different. The two things that are different are the turning stock. So in a left hand drive car, this is the turning stock. And so I'll climb into this car and try to signal. And I'm like, why are they letting me in? I'm not doing anything. This is my windshield wipers. They just happen not to work. So it just also confuses me. In a right hand drive car, it's on this side. You signal and you can get over. So I'll climb into my Mustang after driving this for a couple hours and then I will be confused and I'll be flipping on my windshield wipers looking like a dumbass. Luckily in both of my cars, well, my windshield wipers are disconnected or don't work. So I don't have to worry about looking completely stupid, but I just won't signal and then people will think I'm dumb when I'm changing lanes or I'm a dick or I'm a BMW driver. All three of those are bad. But that, that's one of the things. The second thing is lane position. And this is one thing that I heard was gonna be an issue and it still is. Look at that little Alfa Romero, it's so cute. I like those, they look like mini Ferraris. I don't think they're that fast though. Anyways, lane position. In a right hand drive car, it's simple. You hug the right side. When you're switching between a right hand drive car and a left hand drive car, that's where shit gets a little bit confusing because you'll be cruising, you'll be just chilling, just zoning out, and then all of a sudden you feel the dun 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 because you're running over the markers in the middle of the lane. And that's a no bueno. You don't want to look like a dumbass that doesn't know how to drive. You're attracting more attention to you. Cops don't like that. I am on the bumpiest bridge I have ever seen. God damn. Ooh, the beach. Yeah, I wanted to record this video in the most California spot ever, so I took you guys to the beach. And that Harley is loud. I figured if I'm gonna be talking about driving right hand drive in California and stuff, might as well treat you guys to the California beaches. What are you doing, buddy? Where's your turn signal? God, I was just talking about this. You just cut me off. You're in a motorcycle. And like half of my brakes work. We'll talk about that more in a bit. But uh, I was just enjoying the view, man. I almost killed someone. Uh, I feel bad now. Anyways, lane position. Dude, go faster. What are you fucking doing? All right, I'm gonna go around you. Fucking dick. He, he fucking cuts me off and now is going 10 under the speed limit. Dude, you're on a motorcycle. I ride too. I don't want to kill you. Trust me. <clears throat> lane position. I think I already talked about that. I'm not sure. It's not that difficult. It's just if you're chilling and you're zoning out and you're on a road trip and you forget what car you're in, you'll every once in a while hear this. Let me try to hit it really quick. Oh, uh, I don't want to get too close to the curb. You'll start to hear yourself hitting the indicators. And if you're in the carpool lane and you make the wrong choice and you're too far over in one car, well, you're going to be scraping one whole side of your car. So paying attention to lane position. I'm sure within time I will just know naturally now, but at this point I'm pretty comfortable with it. It's not a big deal. It's just if you're on a road trip or you're driving like an hour away and you're just chilling, you're zoning out, you're listening to music, that's when it happens. Oh, let's, let's get a look at this baby Ferrari. Oh, it's a baby Ferrari. It's a baby. Oh, a baby Ferrari. Now, driving a right hand drive NA Supra is fun. Obviously not as fun as if it was the GT Twin Turbo version, which it will be soon. Uh, I have news on that and I will talk about that in a second. But honestly, it's a lot of fun pulling up to car meets and, and making people's days and seeing them like,
like blown away by a right hand drive Supra. It's really cool. You drive in and not only do you hear, is that a Supra? Is that a Supra? Oh my God, is that a Supra? Which does get annoying after a while. Thank you very much. Not only do you hear that, but you also hear, oh, oh, it's right hand drive. Right hand drive. Is that a Supra? You hear those two things. Now I know it's all part of owning the car and it's just part of the, the car scene and the car culture. And I think any Supra owner will say that it does after a while get annoying. It's like the Mustang joke. Oh, Mustang kills crowds, Mustang killer, crowd killer, or yeah, why did I say Mustang killer? Crowd killer, crowd killer. Oh, you're gonna go hit a, get a crowd. That joke gets old just as much as, is that a Supra? They, they both get very old. Hey, look, a policeman. Well, my car is stock officer. For once, he can't do shit. Anywho, pulling into a car me and, you know, making people's days and, you know, letting them get a look at the, the car that they want to own. Because I've had chats with a bunch of people and they tell me how this is their dream car and they're just, they're impressed to see it. And they're also impressed to see how cheap you can find them. I mean, you can find a good condition, right hand drive, Supra, you know, NA Auto. Some people don't care. If you wanted to drive a Supra, an NA Auto will do. Um, but if you can find an NA Auto or an NA Manual for like 18,000, which sounds like a lot, but people think that Supras are like 60, 70, 80,000 dollar cars and it's, they're not. You know, if you find an original GTE, low mileage, clean paint, original everything, sure, it's an expensive car. But that's not what everyone gets, you know, just because it's a super doesn't mean it's a hundred thousand dollar car This car is not a hundred thousand dollar car. This car doesn't look like a hundred thousand dollar car It's a clean car. Don't get me wrong, but it's not perfect And so when I when I chat with people and I tell them about that I tell them how affordable and how cheap a Supra is they get kind of blown away I was talking to this one guy. He didn't know that I had a YouTube channel and anything So he, he didn't know anything about the car or where I got it. And I was telling him about it and I was like, yeah, I got it from this one guy the supermarket and you know he imports Japanese cars or Supras mainly or only actually I should correct myself he only imports Japanese Supras and uh, he sold me this one for 24,000 and he was like what he was like I'm paying 30,000 for my Honda Civic what the fuck I should just sell that and buy one of these what the fuck and I was like I'm telling you guys they're not that expensive and you get what you want you get your dream car and so it's, it's really cool to, to tell people and show people that, hey, look it, you can do this. You can get what you want. You want a Supra? Save up a little bit or sell whatever you got and, and get the money and, and, and go buy one. You can find, like I said, an NA Auto or an NA Manual right-hand drive. It depends on the chassis number and stuff like that, but you can find them for 18, 19, 20 grand, and so they're not that expensive. You can even find left-hand drive ones on offer up in Craigslist and stuff like that. Rarely, but you can find them for pretty cheap, so buying a Supra isn't an impossible task by no means. I mean, trust me, I thought it was gonna be a bit complicated, but wow, that guy really cut it close with that cop. But I thought it was gonna be complicated, but it wasn't that bad, honestly. It's just jumping through some hoops, trying to register it. And if you really wanna figure out how to do that, there's other YouTube videos on that. I'm not gonna talk about any of that, but owning a Supra and getting your hands on a Supra is not impossible. Driving right-hand drive, driving stick shift, don't let anything scare you. I don't think driving right-hand drive scares many people, but I know people are afraid. Is that an Aventador? Is that an Aventador over there with white wheels? I want to see that. Oh my God. Wow, that caught my attention. No, it's not an Aventador. It's, it looks like a Perf or a Huracan. Might be, a, I don't think it's a Perf Amante, but I see it. I see the wheel and the side scoop. I don't think it's a Aventador though. We'll see right now, but it is very clean. I'm gonna look like a dumbass leaning out my window. Let's see, it's a Huracan. Oh, and look how thick it is. Oh, oh, look at it. Oh yeah, watch this, watch this. Lambo versus, Lambo versus Supra. Lambo versus Supra. Oh, gapped him. I took him to Gapplebee's. I'm in front of the line, Lamborghini, know your place. You know, 1993 is calling and we're in first. <laughs> Chilling at the beach, look at this, an SRT8, damn. Oh, I love that pearl paint job too. And I think it had black and red wheels. Oh, they almost look like TEs, but they're not. And they look sick. Oh, I got the Aventador behind me. How does 1993, that's not the Aventador, that's the Alfa Romero. I'm telling you, <laughs> those little cars, man. Uh, uh, we're just chilling out today, guys. We're just going for a cruise and talking, just enjoying the scenery. This is Reister Central right here. This is Huntington Beach Main Street. I'm always out here on the motorcycle. So if you guys are ever in the area on like a Saturday or a Sunday, you'll either see me or a bunch of my friends out here. My buddy comes here every weekend, but 
I'm here a lot too, and you see so many ricers just doing dumb shit, just revving their engine around here, driving, trying to impress people, and it is, oh, it's, it's content, but I never come out here to record, I'm just chilling, so I, I should one of these days just bring my camera and just record all of the dumb shit I see. Maybe this weekend, maybe I'll do it, but anyway, guys, yeah, driving right-hand drive, it's a load of fun. It makes normal everyday driving less boring. I can imagine driving this to work every morning. I wouldn't really complain if, if I had to. If I was driving this to work every morning and I had to drive 35 minutes, I don't think I'd complain. Going through a drive through is a little bit weird because one, they all recognize who you are and they never forget because you're that guy in the right hand drive car that makes it difficult for them to take your money or to give you your food. So they never forget you, which is one thing. So then they mentally take note of how much you get in and out or how much you get whatever the hell you're getting. So for instance, I was at in and out yesterday and I, I go there a lot. And one of the people was like, dude, you make my day every time you bring this car. So already I knew, okay, this guy thinks I'm a fat ass because I come here so often. So I got to stop going to that in and out so much. And two, then when I pulled up to the next window, the chick was like, what kind of car is this? And I was like, oh, it's a Toyota Supra. And she was like, oh, it's cool. And then she was like, my boyfriend has a, a WRX. I know it's not really the same. And I was like, no, it's still cool though. And I was like, all right. So I know you're, my competition is a WRX. I gotta, I gotta impress the late, no, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> anyways, no, um, it, it's a small conversation starter. And, uh, but they will mentally know how many times you go to in and out or wherever you're going. So I gotta, I gotta chill, but I don't know. You don't really have to drive in backwards. A lot of people will say, Drew, go to the drive-thru and pull in reverse. It sounds like fun and it sounds like it'd be a good Instagram video, but then you're staring at the people behind you for the whole time. Whoever's in line behind you, you're making physical eye contact with them and you're about to get a Karen calling the police on you because she thinks you're breaking the law for going in reverse. Anyways, I'm gonna head back home. I don't know how long I've been recording for. I just wanted to just chill, kind of cruise around, talk to you guys, answer some questions. If you guys have any questions about the Supra, let me know down in the comments. I am taking it in very soon to do the swap. I'm going to Sideways Performance in Santa Ana, California, and I've been talking with the people there, and we, we've got everything pretty much dialed in. We have everything ordered. Mostly everything is there. My engine is there. I've seen it in person. Uh, my intake manifold is there, my infinity computer system is there, a lot of the stuff is there, wastegate's there, uh, the intercooler is there, everything is there I think for the turbo and the cams, and so I think we're just waiting on those two, but they could technically start I believe on Monday, so I think on Monday we're gonna go down there and film some stuff and uh, see what's gonna be going on with all that, but I'm excited for that and then I will have a fucking wild Supra, it's not gonna be a thousand horsepower or anything like that right off the bat because this transmission here is the limiting factor, but it's a really good transmission for like canyons and road courses, and that's kind of what I want to build the car for. So we will see how fun and how good it will be. But I'm excited for that. The Mustang, I thought I was done modding it. I thought, you know what, the Mustang is fine. I'm making plenty of horsepower. I don't think I'm done modding it. I think that bitch has some more, more juice in her, and I need to squeeze it out because she's not fucking fast enough, and I need to win every fucking race. So I'm gonna, I talked to my tuner about that. I don't wanna spoil anything, but I got some stuff in the works and I don't know if I'm gonna go through with it, but I don't know. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway guys, I'm gonna head home, edit this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. Comment down below any questions you have about the Supra and I will try to answer them in a future video. Maybe I'll do a part two because I know you guys got a lot of questions about the Supra and right hand drive and importing a car, so ask them down below. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.